Welcome to Whiskey Gaming, and this is my late review of Nobody Wants to Die. I played it on the Xbox Series X. It's also available on the Series S, PS5, and PC. So let's get into the story. First off, you live in a world where people can basically be reshelled, I guess you'd call it. They have a thing called Acorite, and you can store a person's brain, memory, and all that crap in it, and they can transfer it from body to body. Why is that important? Because, well, you play as Detective James Kara. And, well, there was a giant train wreck that destroyed his previous body, he's got a new body, and he's still not really being allowed to be a detective. Fortunately or unfortunately for him, the chief calls and they need somebody to do some kind of off the books work and write up a fluff piece of a report, we'll call it. But since he doesn't have any access, he gets partnered up with Sarah Kai. She's his liaison. She's the man in the chair, but in this case, woman in the chair. And your first investigation is of a guy who's been around forever and a half by reshelling. And well, it's a guy known as Green. He's got more money than God, lives on the top penthouse, and has more political control and power and all that crap than you could ever imagine. But things take a real turn when you find out that, well, his Icarite has been destroyed. It's been burnt up. He is dead, dead, perma-dead, gone. And like any great neo-noir story, it of course goes so much deeper than that. Which I didn't really address at the beginning, but this is very much a neo-noir story. The dialogue is very, very noir, whereas the setting is like this futuristic New York. You've got flying cars, you've got skyscrapers so tall that like the air quality truly changes from bottom to top. Got all sorts of crazy tech and gadgets to do the investigating with. I actually really liked the story. It gets really interesting as it twists and turns and some of the shit I absolutely did not see coming, which is kind of awesome. I really do enjoy it when I don't know what's coming in the story every time. And I think they just did an awesome job with that. Now let's get into the audio. And I'm going to say the voiceover work at first came off as cheesy, but then you understand that this is really going for that noir vibe, like down to the dialogue delivery. And once you get into that, it really just kind of works. But then you've got the music, which is like true classic noir, like 1940s, 1950s noir music. It's not like cyber noir kind of stuff like you'd expect from a game like this. And then we got the sound effects, which I think are good. I don't think they necessarily blew my mind selling the futuristic level of things, but I did actually enjoy them. I think they worked very well. I can't think of any missing ones, so I'm not going to bitch and moan about it. Let's get into the gameplay mechanics and whatnot, and this is a first-person interactive narrative. You are walking around in first-person investigating the crime scenes. You have a variety of tools which allow you to gather information so you can reconstruct the crime scene, which basically allows you to be a third party who wasn't really there, but you're basically viewing it as if you were there, which allows you to look at the angles of gunshots, follow blood spatter patterns around, see where the electricity was going when this happened or how, you know, a chandelier fell, things like that. And I gotta say, I thought that was actually a really cool element. I enjoyed the investigative parts of the game. Kind of takes me back to some other games I've played where you get to really actually do some investigation. I think that's fun. And honestly, I want more of that in a variety of games. I think it'd be cool. There's no crazy shootouts. There's nothing like that. It's really just investigating, putting your stuff together, and then you go home and you basically have a digital murder board where you connect clues together to achieve a conclusion. And what I like is the back and forth between yourself and Sarah and them working together to put it together. You do have some freedom of choice in responses. There are also multiple endings. I didn't necessarily love my ending. I did go online and watch all the other endings. And I gotta say, one thing I dug was how they did the different endings and how you get to them. I don't necessarily know how you get to all of them, but watching the replays I was watching, you could see certain dialogue changes that I didn't have that led to different endings. So I liked that. Wouldn't mind experiencing that. 
Overall, I think it was really well done, and what they did really fit with the world they were building from a gameplay standpoint. Now, controls. I don't have any complaints with the controls. I think the game worked very well. I do think when you're in the photograph mode to take photos of the crime scenes, that's done in a strange way, but that's a little bit more gameplay than controls. I didn't have a problem with the controls screwing me over there. And then we'll get into the graphics and visuals. And I gotta say, it's not the prettiest thing, but it is a good looking game. The graphics are good enough. They're not flawless by any stretch. They're not the best thing I've ever seen, but they are good and what they do well is bringing the design to life, the visuals. All the buildings, despite the fact they're like crazy over the top, huge, and you are in the future where you have this crazy tech, they still have this kind of older vibe to them, this older architecture, which I thought was really cool. But it goes beyond that to the way the characters are dressed, the way they look, the vehicles. Yeah, they're flying cars, but they look like 1940s. 40s cars, which is a cool mashup. Honestly, the way they represent all of the tech, you've got this kind of like retro futuristic tech going on. And I think all of that is really cool and well designed. There was clearly a lot of thought and care put into the designs of the items you use for investigation, as well as all the different elements in the world. The visual representations in the murder scenes and all of that. I just think the art style is cool. They clearly put a lot of thought into, in my opinion, what looks like every element from a design standpoint and an artistic standpoint. I was actually just really impressed by it. I think they did a fantastic job. And as a throwback to another first person game that I once played, at least the hands in this look like real hands. But now we're gonna get into a couple of weird problems that I did have. One isn't a glitch, but when I was reconstructing, I got pinned in like a small pathway by one of the guys that I recreated and I couldn't get him to disappear and I had to finagle the recreation, like rewind and fast forward and move myself. And eventually I popped myself out of there, but I was stuck there for a good couple of minutes and it was obnoxious, so that was not cool. And then the next one is a glitch. There was a part where I was supposed to take a key card and put it into something and Sarah mentions that in my ear and then the dialogue just never cleared and the game just wouldn't progress because that dialogue didn't clear. So it was just glitched and stuck there. So I had to quit out and get back in. Fortunately, I didn't lose a huge amount of progress or anything, but it was nonetheless a glitch that did hang me up. So let's get into the wrap up. And the first thing I'm gonna say is there were dialogue options that I totally missed out on because I didn't explore enough and look at everything at first. I do think the game could point out objects a little better than it does, but overall I really don't think that's a bad thing because it really does encourage you to explore and really see this world. So in some ways it's actually a really good thing. But going beyond that, I also would like to experience some of the other endings for myself, which leads me into saying I would actually recommend this game because I'd like to replay it. I thought it was a really fun game. I liked the story. I liked what the actors did to bring it to life. Just overall, I thought it was a really good experience. So I have no problems recommending this if you want an awesome neo-noir mystery. Okay, so in the comments down below, why don't you tell me, are you a fan of noir movies? What about neo-noir movies? Do you prefer one over the other? And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. And if you like what I'm doing in general, share and subscribe. Have a good one. Okay, so in the wrap-up. Oh, oh, wait, that's not it.